Hi, I'm Samindi Pires. I am the CMO of Time Out Group and so excited to be here at the World City Festival. And today I have with me Michael and Nina, uh, two people that I am really excited to have with me on the stage um, to talk about today's topic, which is this world of um, digital, which is the combination of physical and, uh, physical and digital, because that's what um, the kind of life we live today. Um, before we get started, I would love if you guys would introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, go ahead. Hi, my name is Nina Alexander Hurst, and I am the former senior director of global brand marketing for Hilton's luxury and lifestyle brands. Um, and prior to that, I was at Bobblevar, uh, an e-commerce company, jewelry company, um, and leading marketing efforts and customer experience there as well. And I'm Michael Blatter. I'm the founder and CEO of Mirrorball. We're a design, experience design agency that works for big brands around the globe, including Sumindi's Time Out and uh, many other brands like Perrier, Harley-Davidson, Pepsi, uh, and many others. And we're all about designing uh, the experiences of the future. Thank you for saying Sumindi's Time Out. I don't know how about Julio, my CEO, Shh, would feel about it. <laughs> he didn't know you acquired it, I guess. No, I know, or, or, or the group. Um, so yeah, I wanted to start off kind of sharing, if you guys would kind of share your experiences in, in your company, and, you know, in, in working at, at Hilton, and each of you kind of share how you brought to life um, this balance of what the physical aspect of, uh, of your business with the digital aspect. Because, you know, I feel today life is a combination of both, and it's a combination of balancing both of them. So let me start off with Nina. Can you kind of share yeah. what were some of the challenges of, and what were some of the things that were really amazing? Yeah, I think I'm going to give you two examples, one from Bobble Bar and one from Hilton. Um, looking back at Bobble Bar, you know, six to eight years ago when the company started, we were purely online. And while some would have seen the computer as a barrier between us and our customers, I really saw it as an opportunity to build relationships and to use technology to do that. So we implemented video chat live on site at a time, you know, pre-COVID, pre-Zoom, pre-everyone being on video as a way to take our product, show people what it looked like. And even though they couldn't try it on at home, we could try it on for them and show them size, context. They got a look at who we were, who we were, you know, at our headquarters behind the scenes and really build that relationship and shop together, co-browse on the site. And at the time, you know, people weren't really putting video live on site, but I knew even from FaceTiming with my nieces and nephews who were all babies at that time, that the power of video was so strong and that was the direction where we were all going. And I think it's a really important lesson to think about what's next, what can we do that may not be comfortable right now, but that might actually be very, very comfortable for people in the future. And being a leader, I think is important um, and innovating and even failing if it doesn't work, also very important. Um, and at Hilton, you know, we were creating these experiences where we were bringing Waldorf Astoria to life off property in our Aston Martin events, clamping with Aston Martin at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. But it wasn't just about creating that experience for the people who were there. It was how are we going to take that experience and bring it to life for all of our guests around the globe, people who aspire to be at experiences like that, but couldn't be at these exclusive type of experiences. So how are we gonna use influencers and media and video to bring it to life and share out these experiences so people felt like they were at the racetrack, like they were in one of these tents with Waldorf Astoria robes and bedding and not in a hotel, but somewhere else. And I think it's with all experiences, and I'm, I know you are an expert at that, of how can we build it out and really be thoughtful about how we're gonna amplify it for everyone else to partake. So question for you, on the, on the bubble bar you were talking about, it seemed like even though it was digital, there was this personal experience and interaction that was happening. So yeah. did, did the customers get to say, hey, can you try on that one or that one? Or, yeah. or was it just kind of, a little bit more mechanical or was it more conversational? It was much more conversational. I'm such a strong believer in building relationships and 
video allows you to do that in a way that a phone call just cannot. And so these customers speaking with one of our SWAT stylist service with accessorizing talent um, and saying, you know, I love these earrings. I'd love to see what they look like on you. It starts this whole conversation of, oh, well, those are actually my favorite earrings. I wore them to this event. And now you know that much more about me and you want to continue this conversation. And so taking, you know, we can't just rely on digital because we need that human element, whether it's in hospitality or in retail, we just cannot remove that human element and think that everything is gonna go on um, and we're gonna be able to build these relationships. We, we can't replace people with robots fully and completely yet, hopefully ever. <laughs> Definitely. Michael, what about you? So you know, we spend a lot of time working with different brands, um, primarily to create live experiences that get people excited and evoke their emotions and leave them with these very, very deep and meaningful memories. Um, five or 10 years ago, when we started getting into the digital space, uh, everyone was looking to us to like, how do we make this a, a, a better opportunity to improve the experience? But what it evolved into was an analytics tool uh, and a tool to really prove your ROI and improve your scalability and reach. And I think a lot of agencies and a lot of brands got lost in trying to use digital for something that it really wasn't intended for in the world of experience. What we tended to do is, is go deeper and we were um, challenged to you know, take our experiences and how to actually use digital at the experience, very specifically to make the experience itself better. And I'm thinking of a, an interesting example for Jack Daniels just last year. We created an immersive theater tour where we had 80 actors, we took over a hotel and we acted out an entire show about a rock and roll hotel. But prior to the event happening and people arriving, there's like 3,000 people, we had some of our actors, about 10 of them, engage people online through Instagram and through Facebook and through uh, Twitter where they were actually engaging with the guests before they got there and you know, sort of incentivizing the guests to do things when they arrived at this immersive theater performance. We thought that was a really unique way. Of course, we then still did use digital uh, to capture data and communicate with people after the event and you know, put it into Salesforce and you know, use, use CRM later on. But that is always, we try to make that the secondary component of, of digital and physical. There's so many fun and interesting ways to use, uh, to use the digital space in the live experience space that's still just amazingly unexplored. Yeah, I think, you know, for us, when I think about us from a, from a timeout perspective also, is that, you know, we really think about that customer journey, you know, that funnel, the, you know, for marketing, we would talk about the, um, the marketing funnel, but there's also that customer journey. And I think this, this experience that we have of balancing the digital and the physical, because I, I think, Nina, you had the, the personal touch never fails, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when I think about Time Out, we, we started as a magazine, something that's physical that you hold, that guides you into how to explore and, and, and get insights and, and get deeper into the city. And then, you know, we we as a brand was able to evolve and actually have a physical space uh, with the Time Out Markets that allowed us to to curate everything that we had in our publications to come inside and experience. And that changes everything. But when I think about it, the experience goes both ways, right? Like the digital, somebody can go online and, and look at it and hear about it and then go to a physical space to experience. And I think something about us as being human, there's that tactile aspect of it that people, um, I think it it, ha it it has impacts on our you know neurons and, and connectors and and helping to build long term memories mm -hmm. like that emotion emotion that comes out of it and I think you know that's why Nina when you were talking about the bubble bar is really interesting to me because then it seems like even though it's digital you're creating a very similar aspect and I think that's how that space is really going to develop and going through and um, it's kind of interesting now that recently with with COVID, you know, that balance of physical and the, and the digital just kind of almost disappeared to everything being digital. And, and um, out of it, I think, came this whole mental kind of impact for people and loneliness and all of these things. And I think that human connection. Michael, how, I know um, you mentioned to me, you went to Burning Man. I went to Burning Man in virtual reality. Yeah, exactly. Using, Tell us about that. Yeah, so using uh, an Oculus Rift, this I, uh, it's fascinating uh, 
that the Burning Man organization didn't necessarily get behind putting Burning Man into virtual reality, but they pushed it upon the very, very you know, vast and global community to create their own environments on, on multiple platforms within the virtual reality world. So there was, they called it the multiverses. And there was a number of different multiverses to enter. Some were more popular than others, but they literally built out uh, in these multiverses the entire playa, the entire Burning Man environment with art installations, live DJs. Did it uh, feel real? So the interesting part is I had you know, played on Oculus before, but I'd never, I'd played games, but I'd never met anybody or gone somewhere in virtual reality. So um, one of my associates also got an Oculus Rift and he was in Massachusetts, I was in New York. We put on our Oculus Rifts, we texted each other, we said meet at the particular place. and. In virtual reality, we met somewhere and we waved each other. And we started talking. And we found. Was each there other. a map? Like, how do you find? We each actually other? had been to the playa. In real <laughs> so I'm we, like really fascinated. So by we this. had been to the playa in real life. So I said, "Meet me at the man on the south side." So did they by the third lamppost? And so they replicated. They replicated the exact the exact wow. environment. So we started at the man, which is the most common place. And if we had been in the at the at real Burning Man, that's probably where we would have met too. So, and then from there we said, where do you want to go? And there was portals that you could jump into to enter other worlds. There was camps you can go to. There was parties that we had been invited to, literally had invitations to that you needed it to go there. And we spent the entire night and the following day and the following night uh, visiting all sorts of people. But the most amazing thing, and this is what really I think was the, the tipping point for me, was I met and talked to other people in virtual reality that had, you know, lives and they were in and they were an avatar so I don't know what they really looked like in real life but it didn't matter but there was like interesting people that were dressed interesting and had interesting things to say and uh, what was really weird somebody had built their avatar someone that I knew and that I didn't know was going to be there and I recognized them through their 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 actual uh, avatar and I said is Jim is that you and he was like bladder because he heard my voice and uh, and uh, and you know like, then I hung out we hung out with him for a little while how so. were you dressed I picked, I did it really quickly and I just picked some interesting stuff, but I gave myself a mohawk and, uh, and a crazy long goatee, <laughs> but I, cause you could do whatever you want, but it was, it was fascinating, but the, it presents such spectacular possibilities where I thought it was a gimmick. Um, it's really not. So I could see that if there is a great live experience happening somewhere in the world, and now we can join that experience through virtual reality with a, with what was a $500 pair of goggles and some hand, some hand sticks to, to get your hand move where you could pick things up and move things. Uh, I, I thought it opened up a world of possibilities. I think, uh, you know, it's unfortunate for COVID, but on the positive note, it's pushed us to use uh, digital and video and content in all new different ways. So I think it presents spectacular possibilities for marketing and just for having fun in general. I know, it's, it's really interesting. I think during this, during this period where everyone was in lockdown and, you know, we have, we are representing, you know, in like 328 cities. And one thing that we realized was that for the first time, we're we're so hyper local in our in our publication and everything that we're doing. When everyone around the world was experiencing the same thing, that because of the digital space we shared, like all of a sudden, you know, what was going on in Hong Kong or Singapore to London, you know, to New York to Miami, like pe the similar things were happening. Barcelona people were outside in their balconies and cheering, you know, Miami. And one of the things we realized was that something that happened that I think like to your the silver lining is that we didn't realize how much um, people got together and was interested in common content that maybe we wouldn't have seen it as well because we were so specific to the cities now we had all these common experiences and people were starting to share and look and um, I even remember I, I went to one of our time on live Instagram videos I think we had a cooking uh, demonstration with one of the local chefs and there were like people from like Italy talking and like which I never experienced before which uh, was That's why I loved the hashtag that you had the time in because around the globe we were all truly experiencing the same thing whether it was you know that week in COVID where everyone was making sourdough and looking for starters <laughs> or yeast mm -hmm. but there are all these more being on house party I know we talked about that yeah. before where yep. that everyone was on house party for a few weeks because everyone was craving these sort of in-person experiences and how could we get that in a digital world and you know it's going to continue to evolve I think what you experienced in Burning Man you know, with the rise of gaming, and I think gaming is something Absolutely. that to the rest of the world mm -hmm. who was 
those of us who aren't gamers, it was really hard to understand this idea of a musician, you know, debuting a new song within a game and everyone collectively yeah, going yeah, to sure. watch yeah. this concert with their avatars and dressing up and finding their outfits and it's it really is bridging this you know physical and digital world especially when you talk about how you can talk to people and interact with people within this world that you interact with outside yeah there was i, I believe multiple concerts within Fortnite in the last few months yeah. during covid that were wound up being the equivalent to the biggest record releases in history mm -hmm. And it's they were like li they were like live concerts. I mean, I couldn't pry my kid out of his room for like two days. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible. And even mm. the way fashion is playing a part sure. within these games, you know, the mm. newest Gucci sneakers, it's so hard to imagine needing to buy them for your avatar versus spending the money in real life. <laughs> sure. But it's a reflection of who you are, just mm -hmm. like your long goatee was a reflection of... of or the mohawk. Or, yeah. <laughs> two things I can't do in real life, but... Uh, you know, That's physically. what's so great about right. having an avatar. Exactly. You can do anything. Yeah, I, I want to I add, too, I think, you know, I would be remorse to, to not discuss my minor addiction in TikTok. Oh, uh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, I, it's, a, it's the buzz of everyone, and it's kind of the scourge of my own household. But um, I am seeing content from all over the world, and I finally figured out, like, what is the appropriate uh, length of content that I like. And now that the what algorithm, it? well, it's like 10, 10 seconds. But the really? fact that the algorithm... Are you sure it's not three no, seconds? No, they're all, they're all like ten seconds. I can't keep your attention for more than three seconds. <laughs> TikTok, you got to figure out what TikTok's got going now on. Now the truth comes out. But the, uh, the, the fact that the algorithm has figured out what I like, and that's like home repair, uh, you know, pet videos. But it's got, my, it's got what I like. It's not like. It's not teenage girls dancing around, which is where it starts out for everyone, but eventually it finds, it finds what you like, and the more you like, the more the smarter the algorithm gets. But what I found is that the... That... Uh, trick that they've pulled where they give me just the right amount of the various things that I like in this very, very short form content. We've always talked about short form content in the digital world. And I think we start, talked about short form like, oh, a one minute piece or a two minute piece. Like short form is like 10 seconds yeah. and it's quick succession. So I think um, from bridging the live space and the digital space and the content that comes out of it now needs to be more designed for TikTok not for YouTube, where we were living like, oh, we'll design our content yeah, and, shift, and put it and, and shift it all to YouTube. It's not really about that anymore. It's very much about TikTok and Reels and these other short form content platforms. Yeah, but at the same time, I think the short term, uh, the short form content, if it's really good, you can get them hooked I for agree. your for your. Um, a, lot, a lot of people promote, if they, it's promote really their, they promote you to their long form content. I haven't jumped over you, but like there was somebody I was watching today. There's a an influencer that bought a, an abandoned silver mine in uh, like out in California somewhere. Hmm. And he's got all this amazing short form content. He's actually, so he bought a, a silver mine, but he's hunting for used Levi's from the 1800s in his silver mine that he bought for like a million dollars. Wow. And so every day he's That's going so down in the mines, but he's not, he's not looking for, for old silver. He's looking for old Levi's. That's his thing. But uh, he every day is promoting his long form Something content on YouTube, which I, it's on my list. I talked to someone today. So I got to watch this guy's long form because it, it's actually really interesting. I think you have 10 seconds to reel someone in. Exactly, and if it's right. good in that 10 seconds, I find myself watching things for far longer. I do just, too. Sure, I true. get very, very sucked in, especially with TikTok, because some of the things are, you know, some of the videos are a little longer. I keep watching more from the same person because mm -hmm, sure. it's a continuation. And I'm, you know, an hour goes by and I'm curious uh -huh. what I just spent <laughs> that last hour by. doing. How and I still don't know by. how to do a TikTok dance. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but I, I, you know, I wonder how long um, we're going to have that attention for that platform also. I, 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 I'm curious what's next. You yeah. know, because right, I think, sure. because I think like so many of these platforms, you know, some brands have had some platforms and have had time to kind of be there for a long time, but then you start seeing this shorter and shorter period because there's something new that's coming right. up. I am yet, I still, I mean, I'm, I'm, I haven't watched that much TikTok. Okay, maybe a little too much, but I haven't seen any brand stuff yet. So I have not, I'm, nothing's at least, I may be too old and out of the algorithm for that. For TikTok? Well, too old for their algorithm to say that I like, oh. you know, Pepsi's not hitting me with Pepsi videos in TikTok or, or some oh, brand, really? but uh, you know, it seems like there's a massive, massive opportunity for short form content and brands on TikTok. I think I, Elf is doing a really good job. The makeup brand, mm -hmm. yeah. they did a dance yeah. video mm -hmm. and I mean, it's I elfing amazing of, as they say. Uh -huh, it's interesting right. though, but the, a lot of the major brands are on there. Mm -hmm. If you think about before, I mean, over like I think 65% of 
of their audience was like 13 year old girls. Right. So yeah, like yeah. you saw, you saw it was my daughter of, that turned me on to it. Yeah. That was like, you know, makeup brands, shoes. And I think with, when it comes to, I think boys, it was a lot of shoes and Hypey like stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And things like that. And so I did see a lot of brands that were, um, that were doing. And I think it really started with the Asian community. There was a mm -hmm. lot of involvement. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, and yeah, I no saw a, a lot of brands that were targeting uh, that community and, and being there, and it's kind of a um, cool, mm -hmm. cool way. But um, I do think, I, I wonder if if it's too late almost for the big, because I, I kind of feel like it's almost plateauing. Like, it's like, you know, when, when the older generation starts you know, I feel like, Thanks. <laughs> I feel like, you know, when, when a, like lot every, a lot of, a lot of people know it. And then it's like, you know, I talked to my 15 year old son. who's like, like, yeah. I feel like he's gone on to the next, but he won't tell me because then it won't be cool if I. True that. Yeah. If well, I, so also the question of measurement, all, you know, all of the brands who got in early may not have been able to measure the impact sure. in the same way, but clearly the leadership teams were willing to take that risk. Yeah. And I think it says a lot about those companies that did jump in really quickly and were mm -hmm. willing to try something new and maybe TikTok went nowhere and maybe it went somewhere and now they're leaders. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, is every brand ready to look at TikTok or are they already thinking about what's next? What's Cause next? there's something else coming. We I are, we are kids like we, I think we both got in trouble from our, our 15 year old sons yeah. because we figured out they were playing on discord yeah. <laughs> and communicating on discord, which we both didn't know what it really was. But apparently every kid is doing their homework and chatting on discord when they're supposed to be in their digital classes on their remote learning. That's right. I yeah. used to tell my son, like, why aren't you responding to any of my emails? Like, right. he's like, who looks at emails and who looks <laughs> at text? Right. He doesn't look at text. He doesn't look at email. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. Yeah, they're on Discord. They're on a whole other plat secret platform that we're not supposed yeah, to know about. I know. But which was born out. Which started. was born out of video gaming. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Born but really gaming, born yeah. out of quarantine. No, born out of video. Well, the that, gamers have been so, on this platform yeah. for a long time uh, because it shares your score and your status in uh, the gaming world. But the platform's so robust that you could share your homework with us. I saw my kid like doing homework with his friends using Discord. Yeah, and my so, son, you yeah. know, because we lived all over the world, that's how he talks to all his friends from all over the world. Right. And it's cool. You know, it's got a cool factor. Until you get yeah. on. Yeah. Until so you, not anymore. I, I, we, we've apparently killed speaking that. Speaking of that, I think, you know, this is where I think personality types comes into. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I've had a lot of people talk about this time, even with, with kids, and this balancing of the physical and the digital. Because, you know, kids who are very physical, sports-oriented, had a terrifically hard you know, difficult time adjusting to this world where everything was digital or those kids who, yeah. you know, a little bit more introverted and you need to make an effort to be on, on, uh, on the digital platform. Well, people like my son, who that's what their life is like, he had no issues. Like people are like, sure. how is he doing in this? Girl? And I'm like, no issues. Yep. And it, it didn't matter to him that he didn't physically see his friends. So. Mm -hmm. I really, I, but I also wonder what are the implications? What well, I think it's interesting that we can even have burnout in the digital world, whether it's For too sure. many yeah. Zooms or too many house parties. Um, this idea of people needing a break from physical interaction in real life, like truly in real life, has sort of now become the same thing, taking Zoom breaks and screen breaks. And, you know, that's why I'm curious in this post-COVID world, you know, I think people are going to be excited to get back together, but they're also going to have these new ways of living uh, on their, you know, digital platforms and where, how do people recharge? How do they regenerate? Where are they going to find, you know, to refill? Um, but th I think, but that, you that know, may, time that hopefully will, is a great right. example of that. No, absolutely. It, because, you know, it's interesting as we opened up our markets and, you know, I, I'm afraid to eat anywhere else because I know the precautions that we took. Like, you know, we knew, you know, how much fresh air was pumped. Like every six seconds, fresh air was being pumped into each of our markets. We have, you know, huge ceilings. We have UV filters that, you know, like all of this, we had people cleaning every, you know, we have identified people who are cleaning. We have sanitation, san like it was, it was so, and we gave the people the comfort of saying, okay, if you're ready to go out, we're ready for you. And, and it was interesting when we opened up, 
um, one of the behaviors we saw is like we had our app, so it was you know contactless. Was, you yep. didn't yeah you didn't have to go and talk to anyone. You can order it. You can sit down, and when it's ready, it told you you go and pick it up. But what we realized was like in each of the markets when we opened, long as there wasn't a lot of people, they chose to go and order it. So like we gave them an option not to because of safety, because of all of this, because we were thinking like this was, this is what everyone wants. And um, it was really interesting behavior to see in the beginning and, you know, talking to our GMs and going, yeah, you know, people still crave yeah. people, human, you know, interaction, human mm -hmm. interaction. And I, and I do, you know, kind of seeing that and, and, and experiencing that personally in our business, like I feel that the pendulum is really going to swing to a certain extent, the completely the other way. When I think when we safe. do have when we do have you know a vaccine and people are going to feel a little bit more confident, a little bit more um, feeling this that oh I don't have to be as, as afraid that people are going to be and you know I'm really excited because I think you know one of the things that we as a brand are really looking at is like how do we revive like what are we going to do right now all our emphasis and michael you're you're kind of helping us with this is like bringing the community together right now you know all the cities that we're in the city governments our businesses like everyone's trying to give people a reason to find joy in, in where they're mm -hmm. living and part of that joy is like the digital space is there but we're trying to create a safe Place for people to actually get out of their house and also experience like touch it. not to feel. be irresponsible not to you know not any of that but just giving people a place to go and, and do something because and especially in urban cities you know the the choices are limited you, you, li you live in smaller places and you know it's, it's not like you're living in the suburbs so yeah I think that's gonna breed a lot of creativity not you know time out hopefully leading the charge but uh, you know, restaurants, you know, uh, bars, eventually, you know, nightclubs. Now, uh, I think we'll see, you know, the pendulum swing back more towards more cultural things and more interesting stuff to do. I think museums will swing back, uh, doing more interesting things, and I think people will uh, not take that museum for granted that we may have previously uh, that we didn't go to, uh, because we thought we'd eventually go there another time. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to those days, hopefully sooner than later. But uh, I think also in the meantime, um, digital will give us a great, uh, a great ability to explore all sorts of other things. When, when the balance, when the pendulum swings back to the middle, we'll be able to take a break. And if we want to go work from the woods on Zoom, it'll be okay. Yeah. And when we need to be in the office, that'll be okay. So I think it's, it's really going to improve the way that we work. It's going to improve the way that we live. It's going to improve everything. So again, the pendulum needed a swing in this other direction. Unfortunately, it came with the pandemic. But when it swings back, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to change and make everything better. Well, I think, Nina, you're an example of this right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, you know, when we say, well, where are you right now? <laughs> I mean, at this point, uh, I'm right here. That's where I am because I've put all of my stuff in storage. And I think the freedom that this time in life affords us, if, you know, if we're so lucky to have that freedom, and, and I am right now, we have to make the most of it and I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to dream about that next vacation. Sure. I would have loved to have been traveling the world right now, but that's not the world that we live in. And so I'm going to dream about it, but I'm going to wake up every day and really think about how can I enjoy the world and whether it's, you know, one of the things we were talking about before are these timeout is so good at curation. And so if it's looking at all these curated lists and knowing that now the things are safe, I can go to one of these markets and have the best of the best. And I can go to one place to do that. I now have time to dream about what that next thing is gonna be that's gonna be you know, the most joyful, the road trip that I'm gonna go on. Before COVID, I never would have gone on a road trip. It was where can I fly? You know, yeah. what Hilton can I stay at? The Maldives, wherever else. And now it's what hike can I go on? You know, where can I take that Zoom call from? Is it in the woods? Is it virtual burning? A true then? digital nomad as mm -hmm. the term has evolved. Yeah. yeah. But I still think that that human interaction piece is never... Never going away. Never going away. And I, I think yeah. it's so important that brands keep their eye on that, even as they continue to evolve their apps and whatever else, you know, we still need that human interaction. 
I do think one of the interesting things to come out of these last few months is the QR code. Oh, yeah. oh my could God. not get we people to adopt. That <laughs> out. Now I'm like, oh my God, QR codes are the best thing ever. Thank you restaurants for making QR codes just yeah. the most normal thing. Thank you thing. for Apple to finally getting it into the photo apps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. No, actually you're right because I think even, even uh, when we had, I, I remember when I went to the first time at market, we had QR codes on the screens and stuff and I'm like, <laughs> really right. like you this is this this everyone is like, now <laughs> and, and now you know I have to eat my words of, of the team who created Literally, that because yep. it's like it's it's become the reality yeah mm -hmm. but would it have become the reality without this push there's so many things now that That's so true it's so good that we were thinking about what was next even if the world wasn't ready for it. Because at some point, the world is ready for the next thing. And maybe it's not QR codes and it's something else. But the more we push ourselves to innovate and think about the future, the easier it'll be to adapt when you know something else does happen, good or bad. Mm -hmm. So Michael, you, you're in this, in this um, experiential world. And there was another, there was something else that you, were, you mentioned about what's transformed with the digital uh, come on. Which one? <laughs> Dancing. Oh, um, when we, uh, um, in regards to Daybreaker. Yes. Yeah. So um, tell us I, a little I, bit about that, because I was really fascinated. Uh, yeah, someone I, who I, loves I, to dance. Sure. So, um, you know, the Daybreaker community, if you don't know what it is, a global community of people that get up early in the morning uh, and do a set of yoga, and then they br bust out into an amazing dance party. Now, this is a. Have you done this? I have not, but I've always wanted. Yeah, one of the most not, fun. One of the most fun things. I'm not an early person. That's the only thing standing between me and Daybreaker. <laughs> yeah, so one of the most fun things in the world to do, and this is a, an organization that was built globally on physical contact and hugging and being together. But uh, what the the owners of um, of Daybreaker did very quickly, like literally the first people, the minute COVID struck, they put their heads together and said, how are we going to keep our community together? How are we going to dance together? And uh, Zoom was still even glitchy. And they literally, within like three weeks into COVID, they were broadcasting live. They were socially distanced. They brought great DJs and great programming. And they're running and they're running spectacular dance parties, starting with yoga and then the dance parties like virtually every, every, or every, every other Saturday now. And uh, it's become a thing, and it's fun, and it's cool, and you do it from your house, and you get to see other people, what they're doing in their homes. So I think it was just a, gr a great example of, um, of innovation and smart thinking and moving quickly. And frankly, they also monetized it, so it's not something uh, they, they didn't have to give up all their revenue as well, which is wonderful, so I salute them. I think that's what I, I think that's going to be really interesting moving forward and look future forward looking is that there are these brands that were never about being digital and it was all about the physical mm -hmm. now had to pivot and be all about uh digital right. and now the, when the world's open it's going to be they're going to be like well i don't have to be just fully you know fully uh physical anymore you could and i think that's what i'm really interested about because i remember when COVID hit for us at time out when everything that we talked about was what you do go out you know we were time out and in fact we had to all of a sudden you know when this hit like overnight we said well time in. If, if we're not time out we're time in and and you know what are the solutions that we're going to give you know our purpose is to help you know our audience uh, connect it's at the end of the day all the things are about connecting right like it's connecting people to to other people it's connected to things that they're passionate about and we're like okay we're we're we shifted and um and it's and it's really interesting. Like what well, you know, we ha we did that so quickly. One of the things, and not going back to the silver lining, is you know, if we were to do this before COVID, it would have taken us weeks, debate, discussion, mm -hmm. and you know what? When this happened, we said this is what it is. We changed our magazine covers, we changed our websites, we changed our newsletters. We like everything became and snap of a finger globally and it would have never happened if it wasn't you know if, if we weren't put it in this situation and now as we're opening up and our markets are opening up we're balancing those but then you know one of the things we realize is that time in is not going to go away as part of what we what we're about and what we're covering and that and then going back to like we'll continue to give people an access to the global cities like it doesn't have to be just your city so like nina like you know saying, hey, I might 
go to Sydney, I might go and, and still be able to connect and see what's happening in real life and, and be connected. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited for us as, as a brand to kind of say, how do, we, how do we really bring that physical and the digital back together um, in, in some sort of balance? But I, I do think that our markets are going to, you know, try to bring that physical presence and um, so I'm really, really excited about. I'm, I'm excited for what's going to come next from our, the people, um, the innovation. Yeah, the um, challenges that have been presented, pre been presented to us are, are bringing some really, really fun and unique ideas. And I think you're right, global culture. You know, it's like we all talk about global culture. Maybe we read about it online. But uh, the possibilities that video and digital present in real time, mm -hmm. um, it's like, you know, uh, now that we're all used to it, now that we know how to work the, the work the tools, like, there's nothing to say that we can't, you know, go see a great band or a great DJ doing something cool in another time zone right now live. And again, it's not maybe as fun as being there, but as Oculus and and VR develops further, as bandwidth uh, develops, uh, we'll see we'll see more. There's no substitute for live, and there's no substitute yeah. for in person. But um, there still there still presents a lot a lot of unique cool things that we didn't have before or wouldn't have we wouldn't have accepted before. I know. I want to say thanks to World City for letting us do this in person instead yes, of thank you. instead so of nice on, 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 uh, on <laughs> video. It's, so good. It's, it's it's so nice to 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 meet people in in real life and have this kind of conversation and dialogue and in you know in real life because. Um, it's nice to do it on a on a digital platform, but I have to say it's it's really nice uh, to be able to do this. You don't like my Zoom backgrounds? <laughs> you know, <laughs> no comment, right. no comment. Um, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to both of you uh, for joining me and thank having you. this thank little you. discussion mm -hmm. and uh, and talking about our our personal experiences, our professional experiences, and. Um, I really appreciate. So any passing closing remarks from either one of you? Who wants you know, I started with Nina. We'll we'll yeah. we'll let you your we'll wisdom. let you go. Uh, as I as I think I've already said, it's just um, it's exciting to get outside and uh, winter is upon us and I think we uh, need to re remember that um, we're not going to be need, we don't need to necessarily be in our cocoons. There's going to be lots of fun things I think people are working on for winters, whether they're drive-in concerts, whether they're light festivals, whether uh, it's pumpkin festivals coming in Halloween. It's like there will be the socially distanced, safe, fun, uh, in-person things are developing, and uh, we got to get out and support as much of that as possible. And uh, same thing goes with restaurants. As restaurants are opening more, uh, we've got to get out and support them to the best way possible so that uh, we can have a smooth transition back to some normalcy in the near future. Thanks, Michael. Nina? I think building on what you were saying, Sue Mindy, like we have the opportunity right now to bridge this digital and physical world. And if, if the last few months have taught us anything, it's that we need to innovate. We need to be able to move quickly. We need to be able to change logos uh, as quickly as possible, but we can do it. We have the ability to do it, and hopefully moving forward, we don't forget that. We don't go back into yeah. these slow timelines, dragging our feet, <laughs> needing to do everything perfectly, because there is no perfect. We don't know what tomorrow looks like, and all we can do is make the best of today, and hopefully that's what everyone continues to do. Build communities whatever way is possible, that's what we should do. Yeah, I, I, I think the closing remarks for me is that the cities all around the world, um, they're not closing. I, I think this is, there's a pause in what needs to happen right now, but there's so much resilience, innovation, passion in the cities uh, around the world. And there's a lot of power in that. And, and to, to what both of you are saying, I think, People are out there and are ready to um, to bring the cities back up um, and uh, back to its activities and glory days and and like Michael said, you know, look for those opportunities out there. Be safe um, and help your communities. Um, I know we're trying to do our part from uh, from time out because we, you know, we're part of the fabric of the cities that we're in and we want to make sure that we help. Uh, bring it back to life and and really 
you know, help people discover that soul in, you know, of their city, like really understand going into that inner, you know, inner passion and um, get everyone to really celebrate it. So um, in my closing remarks, take care, be safe, and uh, we'll catch you the next time. Thank you.